This podcast has mature language, not intended for underage viewers. Street Cred Sports. Street Cred Sports. Uh, I'm crossing over. I'm Euro stepping. Hello. This is Keenan of Street Cred Sports. And welcome to another episode of Time to Ball. I know you missed me. I miss me too. <laughs> this is episode 62. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I am getting older. And it seems like it's always a little bit harder to get out of bed these days for me. I don't know what it is, but I got to get it right, man. I got a lot of stuff I need to do. So, getting into what we need to do. Hey, I, I, had, I have everything that I was going to start with, but... I just saw something and, you know, I wanted to touch on it. Uh, I was looking at uh, one of the talk shows and they, they had a segment and they were talking about uh, a baseball fiasco with the Los Angeles Dodgers. So apparently uh, Otani, the, the Japanese player, you know, the big, big uh, superstar player, hit a home run and I believe it was his first home run of the season. So a couple caught the ball, the girl, uh, the, the female, the, I guess I'll, I'll say the, the, I'll just say the lady of the, the, the couple, the lady caught the ball. Well, apparently they, you know, they wanted the ball. So they were bringing them back so they could talk to her, but they separated them. So they separated, you know, the, the, the man from, from the woman and uh, put pressure on her. Apparently there was a, the news got into it and uh, it was a reporter and, and made a story and said that uh, the the Dodgers organization pressured her and told her if she didn't give them the ball. Uh, they were going to uh, say that it was they weren't going to authenticate the ball. Now, this ball was worth one hundred thousand dollars. So they were going to give her some, you know, hats and some memorabilia and stuff like that. Well, of course, she wasn't able to talk, you know, have her her husband. I'll just say they were a married couple. Maybe they weren't, but it's kind of easier when I'm explaining it. Uh, you know, her husband wasn't able to come over there with her. So they just kind of, you know, they, they did some some uh, law and order stuff where you separate them and put them both in a room and kind of interrogate them. Well, not only did that happen, but the uh, star, Otani, uh came out and said that he met with the fans and took you know took a picture or something with them well apparently that wasn't true he didn't meet with them they didn't give him any any, any they didn't even give him any kind of uh monetary compensation for the ball or anything like that they messed this up now they're probably going to be out of more than what that ball is worth Cause I'm I'm expecting them to get an attorney, an attorney to drag the Dodgers into the mud. I mean, you can authenticate it because you see that it happened. You saw this lady catch this ball, right? And you know, so she sells it. Let's say she wants to sell it for a hundred k. She makes a hundred k. That's I mean, that's just kind of how it goes. You could have the Dodgers could have wrote her a check for fifty. You know, maybe Otani writes her a check for 50. Hell, he could have gave her 100K for the ball because of the fact that he has all his money. But you but you made something bigger than it needed to be, right? And now everybody's going to be looking bad. They're going to be looking at them really bad with, with how they handled it. And and then somebody else pointed this out. The, the gentleman Otani is under, well, I don't know if he's under investigation, but look, if you didn't hear about it, his interpreter, because Otani's from Japan, so he doesn't speak English. Well, at least he says he doesn't speak English. I think he understands it. But he has an interpreter who, you know, talks and interprets everything he says and communicates and stuff. Well, his, his interpreter uh, allegedly, I love to say that word. That sound like the media when I say that word. Allegedly. Back in the hood, we'd be like, yo, man, that motherfucker did that. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta, I gotta, gotta kind of go by the rules in a sense. So allegedly, the uh, interpreter uh, was paying paid gambling debts, and I think it was four or five million dollars. That's not his, obviously, because he doesn't make it. He he 
paid. He was using Otani's uh, money to pay it. And Tony's like, I didn't know nothing about this. You know, I, I've been I, I've been taken advantage of and everything. Right. So they're investigating that that guy. You know, he might he's probably going to face some some fines or whatever. But here's where it, here's where it could potentially be damaging for Tony. He said he had no knowledge. Right. Of, of what went on now in this incident, which which are two separate incidents, they don't have anything to do with each other. But in this instance, he fabricated a story and said, I took a picture with her when, a, when allegedly, apparently, he didn't do that. So now you got him for lying for something as small as this. So this investigation has only been going on for like two or three weeks. It's very fresh. Any, any person could come on and say, well, why did you lie about that? And if you lied about this, what makes us think you would be? That you're not lying about what you're telling us. So this could be big trouble for that young man. This could be big trouble for that young man. You know, shout out to that to that couple. I hope I hope y'all get a five hundred thousand or a million for that ball. You know, that's that's not right. That's not right. I mean, granted, you know, there are all kinds of things, but you know, hey, people people come in, they just were fortunate to catch the ball. Somebody was gonna catch it if it was a home run. Somebody's going to get the ball. You know what that ball is going to probably be worth. You know, compensate them or, or give them a, a best deal or something. But my goodness, putting them in different rooms like they like they they shot somebody and they were planning a bank robbery or something. Come on, man. That, that's that's not right. So I needed to lead with that. And, you know, I, I think it's wrong. Let me know what y'all think. All right. So. Next thing I'm going to talk about real quick is uh, UFC. There's a, going to be, I think it's UFC 300 this uh, this this Saturday. My producer, which is my youngest, he's nodding his head. He can't wait. You know, and the missus, she, they are two big avid UFC fans, right? And they, look, I ain't going to disclose how they watch UFC because I'm not trying to get nobody taken care of or in trouble. We'll just say that they're able to watch UFC sometimes when they probably should. No, I'm just playing. But they're gonna they're gonna actually uh, pay per view it. You know the way it needs to uh, on a big screen. So I'm really happy for them. Why am I saying all this? I'm just not in the UFC. So I'm gonna be reading a book. Maybe start a book club for this weekend or something. You know, go out, water the flowers or something like that. You know, cuddle with the with the dogs and cats. And you know, I'm just playing. But I won't be watching UFC. I've tried to get into it. I'm just not into it. I don't know why. You would think I would be more into it because it gives you what you want. Boxing, everybody runs from each other. Right. And then you can clearly see somebody lost. But that person gets a split decision win. Come on, man. You know, you know that ain't right. So with UFC, you pretty much know who won. I, I don't I don't know if there's ever been a UFC fight that well, okay, well he's shaking his head. There must be some some shenanigans going on, but it's probably nowhere to the degree of what boxing is. Yeah, that's what he's saying. It's 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 very small, but I guess whenever you have a, a, a sport like that, if you leave it to the judges you in the judge's hands. I've seen where one boxer clearly won. Didn't have a, a, a much of a, a bruise or anything on him. Still looked like he did when they were announcing him. And the other person, you couldn't even recognize him because he was all beat up and bloody. But then he won, and then they rationalized it by saying, well, he was the aggressor. Well, maybe he kept getting hit in the head. He didn't know if he was coming forward or moving back. That's why he kept moving forward. But in any case, boxing has been filled with those things. In UFC, uh, you you don't have them as much. Yeah, I don't hear about them as much. I'm not an avid UFC fan, but I'm really happy uh, for for them to be able to to uh, you know watch it on the a big TV uh, and not have to worry about ATF or FBI uh, jumping in the room or, or busting out the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just giving them a hard time. But, yeah, they're going to be watching it this weekend. Uh, and 
I won't. I'm just not into it. So maybe I'll sit down and try to watch it before or a couple of times. I watched it once and it was exciting when I saw it, but I'm just, I'm, it's, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. All right. But you look, okay. So I do need to apologize for last week. I know I was supposed to, we, we skipped the week. I was supposed to apologize. I mean, I was supposed to do a show, but I had a lot going on. OK, and I'm going to talk into that. So I, I look, I had I had the, we had a new system that I'm integrating with the business. That's that's been a, a pain because it's really tedious. It's so different from what I've been using for the past, you know, 10, 10, 12 years. So, of course, you get used to something and you know how it works. Now you got to get used to something new. So it's converting all clients over, making sure you know what you're doing, making sure that. Uh, everything is running smooth and it's, it's still going to take some time. So that's been the bulk of, uh, what I've been doing. Also, I had to go to Phoenix and I had to go to Phoenix for, uh, a college coaches mixer for, with my guy, uh, Chad growth of area codes basketball, who, who stood me up last weekend, uh, last week or two weeks ago to do, uh, the little zoom meeting. So yeah, man, I ain't messing with you no more. Now nah, I'm just playing. Now nah, he's my, he's my man and he, he really took care of me from that. So it was a, a quick trip. It was what I call a, a recon where I, I went up there. It was strategic. I drove up to Tucson, then went to, to Phoenix for the, the, the social event, came back to Tucson that night, came back to El Paso the next day, had training. And then I had to scout, uh, uh, a basketball tournament in Las Cruces over the, over that on that Saturday. So I was busy. I'm still busy. I just feel a little bit more normal back to to where I, uh, back to where I usually am the routine. But it, it was it was a lot. Plus, I also had a, a a TV interview. So I had a spot run on K Fox and CBS. I'm supposed to get that information or, or the actual story that link so I can post it and I'll put it out there. I'm, you know, I don't like to be on TV. I don't like to see myself on TV, but I mean, it is what it is. They did a quick story on me. You know, I had to, you know, give them answer some questions and stuff like that. So I, I think it, it was, it was pretty good. I mean, you know, you, you always worry that they're, they're going to, you know, put something out. You're like, hey, wait a minute, I didn't say that. <laughs> You're like, what? What is he talking about? That's not my voice. You know, but no, nah, it was pretty. It was pretty good. He he did he did it. You know, really nice and stuff. And then someone says you should do a documentary of the rise of you know how you started and everything. And I was like, eh, yeah, you know, I could see that, but I don't know. I'm I'm so private when it comes to stuff. Well, if you're private, why are you doing a podcast? Well, cause I'm not being seen. I'm just really talking so I, I can sit and do this. But I'm just trying to inform the people and help the people out. That's what I'm doing. But uh, all in all, yeah, it was a nice little segment. And and I'll uh, try to put that out when they give it to me. Uh, so that was something that that was going on. So when I talk, uh, let me let me just move around into the the co college coaches social. It's a good thing. I mean, you're talking anywhere between 100 to 300 people in a, in a location. And, you know, you got college coaches from all around. And, you know, they're, they're – the, okay, I'll tell you this. There were not just college people, but, you know, Phoenix is a big city. It's an NBA city. And when you have these kind of events, you're going to have ex-college players and coaches and stuff. So you're going to have M NBA aficionado there. There were there – were, uh, like three or four different NBA players. I actually got to talk to one because he's now a coach, so I'll shout him out. Uh, Ty Day, that used to play for the Arkansas Razorbacks back in 1992. He's now the head coach of a HBCU. Philander, I guess, see, I, there it is. I always mess it up. But it's Philander. I'll, I'll look it up in a little bit so I can, you know, kind of bring it up. But he was one of the coaches I talked to. I talked to another coach of a Division three school. And – the conversations were, were good. What, what I really enjoyed the most about this social was I didn't feel any egos. You know, normally you're around these people, uh, or not these people, you're, you're around uh, people that, that have, you know, a big social status, you know, they're famous and stuff. A lot of times, a lot of people are just kind of, they're kind of asses, you know, and I've always said I've never really wanted to meet my idols because 
I don't want my vision of them to be tarnished if they're an ass, right? So I, you know, I kind of was expecting that some of these guys, some of these coaches and people would be kind of like, you know, who are you or don't look at me, or, you know, I don't have time to talk. Everybody was so friendly, everybody from top to bottom. There was not one person there that was, you know, looking at at somebody like in in a, you know, a shitty manner. Everybody was was cool. And and I and I really respected and gravitated to that because I'm a people person and I try to, you know, make everybody feel welcome and and comfortable and stuff. I don't want people to feel uh like, you know, like nobody cares about them what they're there. So, it was really cool to see. Well, in in doing that, I actually had a conversation with a college coach and we were talking about the portal and what he was saying was something I actually mentioned um, uh, before where we were talking about how he, the number out there, they say is 50%, 50% of the people that uh, go into the portal, they don't get placed. So they don't, they don't end up, you know, they end up, without a, a a school to play for. He thinks that number's higher. There's quite a few that I've heard rumblings that they think that number's higher, that there are a lot of kids that enter the portal because they want to move around and then they don't get a chance to move to a different school. And then, you know, if they move, obviously that school that they were at replaces them. They can't go back there. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, so... I know, I mean, look, free, free, you know, free will. You you have a chance to move around, but you have to understand the consequences. So you have to ask yourself sometimes, is it is it better for me to go or am I just, you know, bitching because I'm not getting as much playing time as I as I was promised. Sometimes, you know, you you might be promised stuff, but as things go by, you you really still have to earn it. If it's promise, if if I would say if I'm a coach and I promise you some stuff, I'm probably promising you this based on what I think you bring. So as long as you do what I think you can do, you should be fine. But if you don't come in and do what I think you should do, I'm going to feel like, oh, well, you know, he ain't bringing it. So I'm probably not going to be playing him the way I was, the way I thought I was. Now, you always have other different situations. Everybody's situation is different, but there are a lot of kids who go from from year to year transferring. And now with the NIL money, it's making it, you know, uh, more lucrative to leave for a situation. So, look, I'm not saying not to transfer, not to move around. All I'm saying is it's not working out for everybody the way they think it should. So you have to understand and ask yourself, is, is you know, if I go – can I live with the fact that I might go end up in a worse situation than I was or not even be playing? Right. Um, OK, so uh, let me get into the tournament. NCAA win uh, men's and women's. OK, you had the UConn men winning, winning the whole thing. Uh, you had the South Carolina women's going undefeated and winning it. Uh, dominant performance by both. Uh the, the women's, I think, was electric, and I think it was electric because you had more star power. And for me, what I love was I got to see a lot of those players play each other. Oftentimes when you have you expect in showdowns, you don't always get those star players to play against each other. But, you know, just to name a couple, you had Paige, you had Kaylin, you had Juju. You had uh, who else was it? You know, Angel Reese, obviously South Carolina girls. But. And that Iowa bracket, they all kind of played against each other. You know, it came down to Clark playing LSU again. Then I got Paige and Juju playing. Then I had Paige and Caitlin playing. So being able to see them play against each other, I think, was huge. It was big for me because I wanted to, I've been wanting to see them play each other uh, against each other, you know, uh, the whole season because I know that they're the top girls. And, you know, not, not only the top girls, but they're – the, the ones that your people are really gravitating to with their game. Now there's some other ones out there that can just flat out ball as well. But these, these are, you know, these are kind of iconic in my opinion 
uh, of the lady sports. There, there are going to be somebody, oh, man, you can't mention in what I meant. Yeah, okay, I probably probably forgot somebody. I'm just going off the top of my head with them. So um, it was great to see that, and I think that's what drove the ratings because you got to continually see, you know, the best play against each other. On the men's side, I have to wonder if the men's is watered down because as good as UConn is, I just looked at them and it's just like, were they just that dominant or was the competition, you know, not as good as what you would normally see? Now, somebody could say, well, the competition just looked bad because they were that good. Absolutely. I don't know. Here's one thing I was talking to somebody about was if you put them against some of the other great national champions, you know, how would they fare? And the conversation was they don't think that UConn would fare uh well against some of those other ones the hard part is we can't see so it's hard to have those conversations because i would like to see i would have loved to see them play against some other teams but ask yourself who's the number one pick in the nba draft there's no star power and unfortunately with sports especially sports you know it's driven by star power you want to see the best play each other right and purdue is supposed to be the the second best team in the nation they didn't look anything like it. They had one guy that was just bigger and, and bigger and bigger and badder than everybody else. And then a whole bunch of guys that couldn't get their own shot. And I say that all the time. It's great to be able to come off screens. It's great to be able to shoot. It's great to be fundamentally sound. Yes, you have to start out with your game. But if you're wanting to be an elite player, you got to be able to get your own shot. And I couldn't see anybody else doing it. Only reason I think Ed, Eddie or Edney was uh, their their big was able to do it was because he's seven foot four. So you know you're not gonna have uh, many people to stop him. And and, and uh, UConn's uh, uh, big was seven two. So you know even at that he still had like thirty. And they were you know it's just basically hey we're gonna you you gonna get your points we're gonna shut everything down. Purdue had nobody else that could get their own shot. And that's a problem. So work on your, your counter moves and your go-to moves because if you're trying to be an elite player, if you don't have them, you're going to get shut down. That's easy, okay? Now, I want to just touch because I, I was very disappointed and sad because, you know, I always get sad when they do one shining moment. I always get all emotional standing in front of the screen. One shiny moment. You know, I get all that, and I'm going through like I'm a kid again, getting ready to go in the backyard and work on, on my game and that last second shot so I can be like whoever it was. But in the past, they would show, they would talk and everything, and then after they talk, they would start showing the people cutting the net down. And that's when they would start rolling through all the different people, the names of everybody who worked for CBS, you know, the company and you know, the lighting director. So you get all of these names and you, the names are running down and you can see people cutting the uh, nets down and stuff. And then as they get to the end of, of, you know, putting everybody's name out, then they cut, boom, they cut to the music. Right now they got Luther back, which is which is great. But then you feel it. It's electric. You get that little piano music going on and then it goes into one shining moment. They didn't do that as much as I love Chuck and Kenny and and earning them in there. It was kind of like, oh, it was more about them. Now let's just go to one shining moment. They lost the essence for me. I was very disappointed. I was very disappointed. I had to kind of go through my mind and remember how it used to be. And I don't know why they do it like that now. Is it because it's on TBS and not on CBS? It should be the same, you know. But, yeah, I was I was thoroughly disappointed because I didn't have that feeling like I had in the past. It's weird. So um, that, that's all that is for that. Now, NBA playoffs is getting ready to start. They finna do the play-in coming in. I think the end of the season is last games are on Sunday. It's coming Sunday. And then we'll know. Uh, it's kind of set. The The top 10 teams are pretty much set in each conference. It's just you don't know who's going to end up where. The 10th tenth, the tenth seed team right now could end up seven or, or six, you know, 
weird things can happen. And that's important because if you're 10, you got you to gotta win two games, obviously, but you got to travel both. Okay, if you're the seven seed, you win one and then you're 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 in. If you if you're nine, eight or nine or ten, you gotta win two games. Okay. So uh I think no, I'm sorry, for that seven and eight seed, whoever wins gets in the first game. Whoever wins that game is in. The other three teams, they have to play an extra game, right? So um but what I've what I've been hearing on these on these radio shows and what it kind of looks like when you start looking at um at the games it does look like some of these teams are watching where they could potentially be and it almost kind of looks like they're like you got guys who hadn't missed any games like missing games right so the question is what they say is well you're trying to get in a favorable matchup so like if you're the two c uh, or you're the two seed, you want to just hold on to the two seed, or maybe you want to drop down to the three seed, or maybe you want to be, you know, move up to the one seed, right? If you're the fifth seed, you want to stay as a fifth seed. You don't want to move up to the third seed. You want to just stay there. If you're the sixth seed, you're going to probably match up with this team. So you probably want to try to stay six because if you drop down to seven or eight or you move up to five, you're going to have a, 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 a harder, harder road. To me, it just sounds like you're running from a team. You know, if you, you're just trying to finish at a certain seed, you should play. Just who? Because to me, I, you you don't want an unblemish. You don't want to say, oh well, they finished one or they finished two. They were fortunate that the 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 team that was the third seed lost to the team that's the sixth seed, but they match up really good with the sixth seed. They don't match up as well with the third seed team. So they got they got lucky and then they end up winning and then you know now this team has won the, the championship. No, nah, I wanted to say, look, we beat everybody in front of us. We didn't care what seed they was. We coming. We we coming for you. Y'all want it, y'all got to come beat us. That's the way I kind of want to always look at it. But sometimes when you listening to people and, and you kind of watching it, and it's like, yeah, it does seem odd that this team has been performing and now it just seems like they're inconsistent. They lose a few games here. They win a few games. Of course, you're playing, but it's just weird. It's just something that makes you just like, Huh, it just seems a little off, you know, and throughout the years, I've kind of noticed those things, but I don't know if it's accurate because I'm not there. I mean, you know that some teams will shut things down to to try to make sure they can get a lottery pick. Right. If it's somebody in the lottery that they want to to try to be able to win, like when Benyama, everybody was trying to, you know, see if they could tank just to 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 be able to draft him. So I know it happens. I just, I'm just like, man, I just want to play. If they're a better team, we just got to tr- try to figure out how to how to beat them. And I know sometimes there are some matchups that you just, you know, some teams just they don't match up well. But as a competitor, you you still I feel like you want to compete. That's just me. So you know, I'm not making those decisions, but I think it's just kind of it's kind of weird. Okay, so. Let me get to my basketball ideology. Let me talk about the pitfalls of being a scout. The pitfalls of being a scout is sometimes there are going to be people that aren't happy about what you put out. Right? Oh, that person's not that good. You know, you should have wrote on this person. And it's like sometimes you're looking like, look, man, all I'm trying to do is... uh Put down, put out what I see with my eyes. And these are the things that I see with my eyes. As a, as somebody who's scouting, I'm going to tell you, I do everything organic. I, if I'm coming to watch a game, I don't want to hear about, hey, man, you need to pay attention to this guy. Or oh, this is my kid. You know, watch him. No, I don't want to hear that. Because now it's skewed. Now I'm going to probably watch and pay attention to him more than I should. I like to walk in and not know anybody. Of course, you know of who those players are prior, but I like to walk in and just say, okay, I'm going to see who is there and who stands out. You know, and if you stand out, I'm going to see it, right? 
You do one thing good, and I'm not always looking at, oh, how many points this person scored. I'm often watching the game as far as, hey, this kid's making an impact. This kid right here is defensively making an impact. I wrote up on one kid who didn't really score a, a ton in any game, but he was effective. Now, he was a big, but the most impressive thing, obviously, his motor, he, he got up and down the court. He rebound, you know, set screens and stuff like that. Yeah, that was great. The most important thing on that kid was how he had to switch up sometimes. And he was like 6'7", I think. And he's guarding up to 6'7 posts. His footwork was good enough to where he was guarding guards out on the perimeter in space when they were trying to, you know, go into their bag and, and, and create separation. He was great defending them. I was very impressed. So, you know, it's great when you – when you um when you, uh, you know, write something good that can impact somebody's uh, future, you know, and the unfortunate part is you can't write up on everybody. Not everybody is, is good. And it, and, and it reminds me of what one of the other college coaches say. They're not recruiting okay. They're recruiting great. The top, top performing, top performing kids. So how am I going to do that kid in that that school uh, a, a, a solid by writing up on somebody who's OK? Because the fact of the matter is, OK, is not getting you into to college. Great is going to get you into college. Great at whatever it is is getting you into college. So I don't I don't you know, I don't try to write up on people just because somebody wants me to. I tell them, look, if they're good, I'll notice. And the person who. Who who was uh, there, you know, who was running the thing. And I actually have him on at some point and he, he was about to mention a kid. And I just stopped and said, nope, I don't want to know. I want to see it organic. And then later on, he was like, man, you're right. I, that is that is a great mindset because you don't if you if you write up on them, then you know that it's it's pure. It's not. I'm doing this person a favor. I'm doing that person a favor and stuff like that. So it's pitfalls of scouting. I enjoy it, you know, and. I don't have any uh, nobody's nobody's paid me thus far to do it. That's about probably about to change because I've kind of I've made a little bit of a name of, for myself. So, you know, I think I should you know, you want to be compensated for your time, I guess, is the, is the thing that I keep hearing. But we'll see. I mean, you know, if I can help somebody out, then I will. As long as I'm not out of anything, I'm not trying to charge. I don't want no Rolls Royce, you know, or or. uh uh, uh, what what do they call it? A uh, uh, charcuterie board is that what it's called? Charcuterie board of of cheese and wine and grapes and stuff. While I'm sitting up there and I'm I'm being fan, you know, I I want air conditioning. It needs to be this and the temperature. Nah, I'm not trying to do that, man. <laughs> I can just imagine me sitting up in the gym like that. I know some people that probably would enjoy it. <laughs> Go back. This wine is not room temperature. <laughs> no but uh i am enjoying it so i'm gonna see where it goes and you know continue to try to help you know kids get eyes on them because that's what i'm doing and that's what i told people i do i'm i'm scouting and evaluating and it goes out to the bigger scouts as well as college coaches so if they call me the reason why i have to see someone and i'll tell i'll tell up anybody look if i don't see you i'm not gonna write up on it because if a coach asks me or a scout asked me about the kid, I need to be able to say what I saw with my own eyes. If I didn't see it, then I'm kind of trying to make up stuff. And if what I make up doesn't come true, that's my credibility. And if you don't have no 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 cred, <laughs> then they're not going to call you when it comes to asking you questions. So now I just messed it up for everybody else. So now nah, I'm I'm gonna always I'm gonna always stand on on 10 toes when it comes to that. All right, I have a question. My question is, is it easier to take a player that's already talented and ready, get them recognition and get them signed? Or do you want to develop a player from beginning and get them signed? I think that's more special. Because, you know, I've gotten kids that were all spectrums i've gotten some very talented kids that needed a you know few tweaks here and there 
uh, and, you know, they get signed. The ones, I mean, look, I enjoy every single kid that comes through my door that I'm able to help. But I will say that I it, it gives me, it's a different, it hits me a little differently when I see a kid that's performing now, remembering when I first got that kid, that kid could barely dribble. That kid could barely shoot. That kid had no concept of what defense was, you know, how to pass, understanding what a screen was, you know, is is the kid on offense or defense? You know what I'm saying? Those kind of things. To get someone like that at a certain age and now see them later on, even if they don't go play college, to see that transformation, it, it, it hits me a little bit differently. It, it does because it's like, you know, the work that that kid put in and the time that I helped to to cultivate them, it, it to me is more to me is more special. So I put it out there. I'd rather have a no star kid that I can start with from the beginning and bring that kid and, and get that kid ready to play rather than, you know, a five star can't miss college NBA prospect. Now, obviously, I, I'm going to take them because I can I can teach anybody. I don't, I don't care. You know, I, hey, ain't nobody coming through my doors that I ain't taught yet or can't be able to help yet. I don't care what level they at. I'm just not built to be trying to run around and and get all these Instagram followers and and market myself and get all of these. No, nah, I'm I'm happy what what I'm doing, right? And don't don't mean I can't, but I'm just I'm good. I'm good, right? I'm 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 happy with what I'm doing, but I. I I appreciate it because I understand that journey, you know, what those kids went through. And that's just, that's just my opinion. There, there are others, you know, they like that microwave. They like kids who are already uh, good, you know, and they don't really train them. They just kind of work them out. You know, they keep the dribbling, they make it look, it look good. And then when that kid, uh, the kid's already about to be, you know, looked at, signed or, or, or drafted or whatever. And now you attach yourself to it. And it's like, oh, this guy must be good because, you know, uh, this person must be good because he or she's trained that person. When in reality, if you just strip it down, you'd be like, oh, they was just with him for a week. <laughs> so what did they really do? So, I mean, it, it look, it, if it works for them, it works for them. I'm not I don't want to make it sound like I'm hating on anybody. If it works for them, work for. But for me personally, I love projects. I really love pro. And and it's crazy because when I first started, you know, I was getting a lot of the top level kids and stuff, and I was working with them and working them out and stuff. And it was gratifying because I was helping them. But when I got kids that that were that didn't know things and were clueless and helped them understand it and, and, and improve their game so much so that, you know, man, now they're looking to to be one of the top kids. That that was just, it was more fulfilling. It was, you know, for me because it was like that time that I put in and that time that they put in, you know, I saw the whole transformation. So uh, shout out to everybody. As long as you're doing as long as you're doing good, you're trying to help and you're not having any selfish, you know, motives, shout out to you. If you're out there doing bad, it, it'll it'll come back to you. Trust me. I, I've seen it happen to a lot of different people. So that is what it is. Uh, it's the home stretch for some trying to get signed. There are, you know, kids still, you know, coming up. Hey, I hadn't gotten any looks, you know, and then I just try to tell them a few things. Uh, as best I can, but unfortunately, I'm not giving out information for free like I used to, right? You know, and I know it's I know it's distressing because you know you're you you know what it's distressing. It just made me think. It's distressing worse than stressing. <laughs> you know, if I say it's distressing, should I really say it's stressing? I have to look that up and figure it out. But in any case, I know it's I know, I know it's a stressful, very stressful situation where, you know, you feel like you're good enough to play and you're not getting the looks. You know, you're not getting anybody trying to take a chance on you. Sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone. Look, I had a couple of kids go uh, to an event in Phoenix uh, doing this final four. And, and it was to me, it was a perfect situation. It was it was huge. It was an unsigned senior showcase as well as a, a junior college showcase. And 
you have think about it you have anywhere between two three hundred college coaches in the city for the final four so you put this event on you're going to have probably anywhere between 30 and 100 coaches college coaches in there and when I talked to the parents of some of the kids it was like oh man it was full of coaches it was like it was nothing but coaches in there so yeah you you're you're gonna have an opportunity and that's probably what you should be trying to do is find some venues not every showcase is 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 pure at heart with what they're trying to do you have to just get in these showcases and just play you know you have to be aggressive you can't be passive that doesn't mean ball hogging but you got to be able to do something that sets you apart that makes somebody say hey because these coaches know that in these showcases guys are just trying to jack up shots trying to score as many points they're, they know what they're doing. They're they're looking and, and trying to watch. So there might be a kid that don't really score points, but, you know, that kid is, is playing both ends really hard, rebounding, defending, passing, you know, really, really making an imprint on the game. That kid's going to get a look. So uh, it's, it's a stressful situation towards this time, uh, but I do try to encourage kids and say, look, you had, number one, you have to, Market yourself and put yourself out there. It's rare that people are going to come to El Paso and find kids. I mean, think about it. Without going into it, let's just say I, 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 I'm I in the know when it comes to stuff. Tristan Newton, and shout out to Tristan for winning uh, his second. I probably should have led with that. But for winning his second uh, uh, NCAA championship, uh, being the most outstanding player. I think he was most outstanding player of both. But I know he was for this one. This kid was either the the number one in the nation, number two or number three in high school in scoring. Couldn't get a look. Now, I know there was a lot of people, including myself, on the back end trying to tell people kid can play. He goes to a smaller college and that, you know, that, doesn't quite go it went well he played for two years and I want to say the coach left or, or for whatever reason he enters the portal and look I'm not gonna get all in specifics but there was a path to for him to go where he needs to go and, and if you do your research you'll see what I'm talking about he ends up at UConn and he wins then you have KJ who who's Played El Paso for years. He's at Arizona doing big things. So are we saying, yeah, obviously those two are, are special. But my question is, are we saying that if you have two kids that from one city that end up there, however they were, they were here, they played four years, and they, they went on another place. You can't tell me that there's not kids here that, that can play, that can't play on the, on the next level. Maybe not all Division One powerhouses. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are kids here that can play on the next level for whatever school, whatever level they can play. So, you know, that myth needs to be dispelled. It really, really does. Okay? But uh, in saying that, it's hard. It's tough to get a look. You have to really – some things are luck. You know, you have to put yourself in a position. You have to get out and play against better competition. I will tell everybody, and I say it all the time, playing here against everyday kids here in El Paso is not going to move the needle for 99% of the college coaches out there. They want to see you play against top-level competition because, unfortunately, El Paso doesn't have top-level competition across the board. We've got some good players you got some okay players. You might have a few, you know, top level players, but it's not enough to make it to where the competition is raised because of these players. Okay. But all in all, there's a path. There's a path. You just got to know what that path is, or you have to be able to ask somebody, look, Tristan took a, 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 a unique path. It paid out for him. The nation got to see what most of us really knew is that the kid could play. The kid could play and the kid could score. He didn't he wasn't a scorer there. He he's made himself into a really good guard to be able to run the point. 
but he could score. We all know it here. So it's it's interesting. It's interesting how narratives can can kind of shape things. And I'm hoping it's for the better because now, you know, being able to to have some people question and ask about stuff, I can say, well, yeah, it's a kid here that's that's in that lineage. He he's this person, this kid is close. You better you better, you know, you see what happened by not taking this uh this a uh, closer look at this kid you know you might need to take a really good look at this kid because this kid can play so we have a couple of those kids coming up you know and we'll we'll continue to try to push them out there and, and let people know what they are so that's going to be all for today i felt like i was rambling most of this i don't feel like it was um it's well put together as I like. Uh, my apologies if it came across like that. I was just a little bit more excited uh, because I hadn't done it in a week, you know. So I felt like I needed to just try to make sure I got everything in. <laughs> so, look, always, if you can, like, subscribe, follow, comment. Uh, no bots. No bots. I, I actually, though, I feel I feel kind of good because I had a, a bot uh, comment on one of my posts. And it was like, it put something where it was prosmo or something. And I was like, what the hell is that? Is this some kind of weird language? So I had to actually type it in. And then it said, oh, this is somebody who's uh, like trying to uh, have you promoted on their site. They're looking for, they're looking, they're trying to like, not really scam, but they're trying to help promote their things. So I was kind of like, hey, that's cool. I got a bot on mine. <laughs> I don't want lots of bots, but I thought it was cool. You know, so, uh, yeah, comment. Let me know what you think. We uh, I, I do want to say this going up there, you know, and running into people that I've um, I've been, you know, friends on Facebook, a lot of coaches and stuff uh, in that in that Phoenix area. A lot of them were like, hey, man, when you going to get me on your podcast? And I was like, oh, I didn't even know you knew about the podcast. So, I, you know, I felt good about that. So uh, in the next, I think the next, within the next month, maybe next week, I'll have somebody on. I just got to get through the particulars. And, I, and I'm probably going to have some regular people. I'm probably, I'm going to try not to have Chad on all the time. Although if I, if he could, he'd be on every day with me. We'd be doing a podcast. We just do a podcast with nothing. We'd just be sitting on there looking on our phones because I'm tired of talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it looks like I'm going to be uh, now, you know, figuring out how to how to reach people uh, without having to actually drive around and do stuff. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited that people have actually asked about the podcast. It lets it makes me feel like, you know, hey, maybe I've, uh, I've been doing something OK. So I hopefully people are enjoying it. I tell you what, if I was doing a terrible job, I'm sure I would hear about it in the comments. Man, you trash, you bum. You know, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. A time to shut up is what you should call it. <laughs> time to shut up, not a time to ball. Put that on a T-shirt. I need to make a T-shirt that say a time to shut up. <laughs> so that's all for the day. Uh, I hope everybody's, you know, taking care, enjoying the weather. And I hope y'all enjoyed the solar eclipse. I, You know, as usual, we, we, we didn't get it out here, but there are other parts of the country that got it. And I think the coolest thing that I saw from it was a video uh, of of it of the space station looking down on the Earth. And you could see this big black circle. I thought that was cool. I really thought that was cool. So, uh, you know, my, my flat earther friends, I'm sorry I, I mentioned this, you know, don't don't tune me off because I mentioned this, but all in all, I thought it was a nice thing. And, you know, some people liked it. Some people didn't, you know, it is what it is. So y'all take care and I'm going to end it like I always do. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. I'm out. Street cred sports, say it with your chest. Yeah, yeah. Go get it from the net. Street cred sports. Okay, that's a bet. <laughs>